Beyblade was a cultural phenomenon for me growing up. It was the talk of schools all over. We had the anime series, the incredible Beyblade toy line, and of course, the main focus of today's video, the games. Welcome back to another edition of How Does It Hold Up? The series where I look back at some of the games I played and loved as a child, and put my years of gaming experience to the test by analysing them with a fresh, mature perspective. It's important for me to review these games keeping in mind the time period that they were released, as well as any hardware limitations that may have been imposed on them, while still allowing praise and criticisms to remain constructive above all else. So without further ado, it's time to cram ourselves into the Game Boy Advance's tiny little screen, and experience Beyblade Dew Revolution, and let it rip to see just how it holds up. If you enjoy this sort of content, please do me a favour and hit that subscribe button for more in the future, and give me a thumbs up if you feel I'm deserving of one, I would greatly appreciate it. Now, on with the video. Allow me to take you back to a better time. Your parents or guardians have taken you to the local Toys R Us to get your first Beyblade after noticing your love for the TV series. You walk into the store and you're hit with a wall of the entire Beyblade toy line. So many different types. You wanted them all, but of course you couldn't have them all. You finally choose the right Beyblade for you, a Dragoon Storm. You take it home and realise you have to build the entire thing, but you have a great time putting it together. Your Beyblade now feels personal to you, and you believe in the power of the Bit Beast because you've spent so much time on it before even letting it rip. Is this excessive? Yes! Am I talking about my own experience here? Of course I am, but it's what accentuates my love for the Beyblade IP. Honestly, I don't think I've felt this nostalgic for a toy line before. Just thinking about all these moments really does cement the impact of the Beyblade IP in my mind. But this isn't a toy review, so what does it actually have to do with Beyblade the game? Well, you see, all these feelings are brought to life by the game in this little cartridge. You play through the game as the leader of the Blade Breakers, living out the life of Tyson as he embarks on his quest to become the Beyblade champion of the world. The plot of the game loosely follows the events of the G Revolution anime series. That's enough, you two! I'll go over the rules of the pool one more time since you obviously don't know them! And begins with Tyson's grandpa shouting at him to get out of bed for some important training. And of course, telling you about the family guardian Dragoon. Who's Dragoon? Which coincidentally is the bit beast to your Beyblade. Once the training is complete, you are free to go about your Beyblade journey. This is when you get your first glimpse at one of the RPG elements in the game. After the training session is complete, you'll see a pop-up for plus one strength. Strangely enough, you aren't able to complete any more training sessions during the runtime of the game that I was able to initiate. However, there are other ways to increase the stat throughout the game. How, you may ask? Well, the game sure as hell isn't going to tell you. Heck, the manual doesn't even tell you how to increase it, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Back to the story. It isn't long before you run into a few familiar faces like Max and Ray, who are more than happy to give you information about certain aspects of the game, and of course let you have a practice battle with them. I say practice in the loosest possible way, because if you lose, and at this point in the game you certainly will lose, then they're going to steal your blade from you if you happen to have acquired another one at this point. Some practice battle that was. Anyway, Tyson travels around his hometown, levelling up his Beyblading skills and strengthening himself. And eventually, after exploring and battling through various areas, meeting Daichi and Kai, the game then sees you play through the entirety of the Beyblade Championship, crowning Tyson the champion, and thus ending the game. It's a decent enough sequence of events that are complemented heavily by the gameplay, which in my opinion is the best incarnation of Beyblading that I've ever experienced. Not counting the real thing, of course. Granted, I haven't played every Beyblade game out there, but the ones I have tried, being V-Force on both the GameCube and Game Boy Advance, and even one of the Japanese-only titles, G-Revolution was the one that resonated with me the most. Tyson moves around small areas all linked together through a world map, that opens up new areas as you progress through the game. In order to get an idea of where to go to to progress in the game in some instances, you will be required to interact with the strangely similar looking NPCs, as like most older titles, you aren't signposted to your next destination. 
Be on the lookout for things hidden around the map in bushes, vases and tables such as BBA credits, apples and Beyblade parts as they are scattered all over and will prove useful over the course of your adventure. The back end of the game from the championship onwards takes an overall diving quality simply due to the fact that you're confined to the base stadium area and participate in near non-stop battles as you travel between the different countries that the championship takes place in, which is a real pace breaker. And while I do stand by my opinion that the battles are the best part of the game, it just feels like a slog as you have best of three matches again and again, with nothing else in between to keep things fresh. Each of your opponents available for battle will have a level and strength number pop up in the top right corner to give you an idea of the difficulty of the battle ahead, and what I find most charming about heading into battle is that the characters actually walk up to the conveniently placed base stadiums, at least in the areas that actually have them integrated into the map. You were then offered the chance to change your equipped ripcord, launcher, and even customise your blade before the battle with parts that you find throughout the game, and these will affect the stats of the blade, so be sure to check and customise often. Keep an eye on the Bitbeast component, you will notice an experience number next to it. Keep battling and winning with your favourite Bitbeast, and it will gain experience points, which will increase your damage output for combos and your ultimate skill. It likely means you won't be looking to switch out your Bitbeast, as each has their own experience tally, and it sucks to lose your blade after building up a good chunk of EXP, so save your game often. You can even add engine gear, which when triggered will charge up your Beyblade with extra RPM, but good luck waiting to find out how to trigger it. Before you know it, it's time to finally let it rip. You will have to wait for a countdown as you would in a real Beyblade battle. Failing to do so will cause you to forfeit the match and lose your blade, so you have to time it just right. Once the words let it rip hit the screen, initiate the ripcord and aim for a perfect launch to maximise your RPM during the match. Thinking about it, what does that even stand for? Rips per match? Rays per max? Revs per minute? On a Beyblade? I'm going to go with reps per minute anyway, just to be on the safe side. This number relates to how much stamina your blade has during the course of a match, and let me tell you, this number starts to get a bit out of control the further you progress, meaning matches do go on for far longer than they have to. The thing that makes this game so great to me is the full control you have over your actions during a match. You can move your Beyblade around the stadium to position yourself and move away from a defending blade. You can perform a dodge which when timed correctly feels so satisfying. You can also hop over attacks, again, which just feels so satisfying. Although it can be a dangerous manoeuvre, because if you manage to get the timing wrong, there's a high chance you're going to get knocked out of the arena, meaning an instant loss of the match, and your blade. So be careful. Attacking can be charged for three levels, which deal increased damage the longer it's charged, and the same goes for defending. Each of these actions, aside from defending, will use a negligible amount of your RPM, so there's pretty much no downside to just going ham and spamming those combos. Since we're on the topic of combos, now's a good time to talk about the way that Beyblade G Revolution likes to give little tidbits of information about game mechanics through tips. Bear in mind that this information is not something you can find in the manual either. Only AFTER completing a match, because who needs to know how to battle effectively from the get-go? Your opponent will bestow a nugget of wisdom to you, which varies in quality, from telling you how to defend, to uncovering the secret of success when it comes to battling, the combos! There are three different combo types, ranging from weak to strong, and if I'm completely honest, I can't think of a single reason to perform anything but the strong one. If anyone can shed some light in the comments to the benefit of using anything but the strong one, I would love to know. Anyway, the combo is your main source of damage, and will wear down your opponent's RPM and cause damage to their blade. That's right, you can outright destroy your opponent's blade, and while that's extremely unlikely to happen, the fact that it can happen is so cool. So to make sure this doesn't happen to you, be sure to repair your blade after each match. The last key component of battle is your Bitbeast special attack. A meter charges over the course of a match which you can trigger at any time as soon as the meter fills up by at least one segment. If you happen to perform a near perfect launch at the start of battle, then a segment will be given to you from the get go. The longer you let it charge, the more damage you will deal when you initiate the attack, however it only upgrades the attack after each completed segment, so make sure not to waste meter by using it before the segment fills. 
This attack is devastating and will shave a generous amount of RPM from your opponent while racking up damage to their blade. This move can be the difference between victory or defeat for both parties, depending on when you choose to use it during a match. In regards to the overall difficulty of the game, I found that it was pretty hard to lose outside of making silly mistakes, such as jumping at the wrong time, and the rare occasion of a bad launch. Your opponent will use combos and bit beast moves, but you will find yourself performing them on almost every hit, which the AI doesn't do, so it just becomes a game of numbers. Once you lower the opponent's RPM by a decent amount, then in theory, you are free to let the battle play out by itself if you wish. So to summarise, as I mentioned earlier, the only real downside in my opinion is how dragged out the matches can be at times, but depending on how you choose to play it hardware-wise, that's an issue that can potentially be bypassed through the wonders of emulation. Now it's time to talk about the soundtrack, and it's a conflicting one for me. If you have seen any of my previous videos, you will know that I'm a big fan of video game soundtracks, and Beyblade Dew Revolution tickles my nostalgia bone perhaps more so than many other games. To put it bluntly, I'm well aware it's not the greatest of soundtracks, even for Game Boy Advance it's fairly limited. Some of the looping in the tracks just sounds off, and it switches track every time you leave a room and enter a new one. But I have to be true to my feelings on this one. I absolutely love this soundtrack. I just do, I don't know why, but I just do. Particularly the hub world themes. Here are a couple of my favourites. Then you have the battle themes, which I'm slightly less drawn to. However, when the Beyblade theme song kicks in during those all-important matches against your rivals, Rei, Kai and Max, it takes you back to those days of watching the anime and getting to play out your childhood. It invokes so much nostalgia for me, and I just love it. So to summarise my thoughts on Beyblade G Revolution for the Game Boy Advance, the story, while a nice addition, and seeing some familiar faces throughout your journey helps the player engage with the plot, if they're familiar with the source material. The story does take a backseat in my opinion, which isn't a knock against it, because the real source of dopamine in this game comes from the gameplay itself, and it captures the excitement of a Beyblade battle, which as I mentioned, is my favourite iteration of the Beyblading experience. And while the matches can drag on a bit the further you get into the game, I would argue that for some this may not be as much of an issue as I found it to be. And as for the soundtrack, while it's nostalgic to me personally, it does leave a little bit to be desired in the variety and mixing department. But again, it doesn't detract from the overall experience because the gameplay is strong enough to carry the entire experience. And in my opinion, that's one of the most important parts of a game, so I would say it holds up great. I would wholeheartedly recommend Beyblade G Revolution to fans of the Beyblade series first and foremost for maximum nostalgia, but to people unfamiliar with the series, it may be harder to engage with the concept, but I encourage you to give it a try anyway, it just might surprise you. Thank you for sticking around to the end, it's been great to relive my childhood and talk about a game that means so much to me. What does Beyblade mean to you? Please share your experiences in the comments. I hope you've enjoyed the video, and if you did, please think about giving it a like, and consider subscribing for more content in the future. I have been the Gaming Gaijin, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.